The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely to have you uh, with us here today. Um, how's the volume, folks? Just type in the question box, would you? Some of you make sure that you're uh, all hearing me all right. Here we are. Yes, okay, Mike. Thanks, Mike. He's the first out of the block. It's good. It sounds great. We can, you can all hear me. That's terrific. Well, welcome. Uh, lots of uh, people here today. Uh, it's great. Um, nice to have you with us on this sunny uh, spring day in uh, Australia on the East Coast. Uh, beautiful day. Uh, short sleeves, all that sort of stuff as usual. I uh, hope you're... Uh, parts of the world are just as good. Uh, Albert, good to have you with us. Should be time for another session. Uh, Danny, you too. Uh, uh, lots of tutorial guys here today. David uh, from uh, New York. David's a wealth fund manager. Uh, we often have his partner, Tom Tom, with us, but we've got David today. Welcome, uh, David. Good to have you on board. Uh, let's have a look who else is here. Oh, yeah, Jeremy, he's doing a tutorial in the uh, UK. Uh, Jeremy, time, we sorted out the issues with your ISP and had another session, my friend. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, it's good to have you with us, Mark, you too. Uh, Paul, lots of, uh, lots of tutorial people here. And, of course, uh, Peter King, the short-term trading guru. Uh, he'll be interested in what we've got uh, to say today. Uh, and, uh, oh, he's moved. Uh, Jeremy, you moved the internet. Good. Okay, let's uh, get together as soon as suits you. Uh, folks, I want to say a special welcome today, please, to uh, Glennis. Uh, you, many of you know her as Sister Sage. Uh, many of you have met her at um, our uh, tutorials um, around the world. Uh, and uh, she's uh, uh, been a great friend, uh, her and her husband, Daryl. Um, I think uh, Daryl was probably the second person I ever taught the Daniel Code to way back in the murky past. Um, and uh, Glennis was the third person I ever taught it to. Uh, and she had the great uh, virtue that she'd never seen a trading chart, uh, had no interest in uh, financial matters, um, never read uh, any of the uh, websites or commentary, uh, just simply... Uh, did what I uh, taught her to do, and she finished up, of course. She's one of the best traders we've ever had, um, and Glennis is uh, having a particularly rough trot at this time. She's not with us today, but I know she's going to look at this uh, uh, recording of this later on. So, uh, Glennis, our thoughts and prayers are with you, um, and uh, I know you'll uh, face up to this challenge like you face up to everything else, so we're thinking of you. All right, folks, let's uh, see what's happening today. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of this stuff um, is um, uh, stuff that I do that uh, may or may not be of interest to you. Uh, the way the human brain works, or the way mine works at least, uh, once I find something uh, new and interesting, um, I'm sort of uh, forced to go on examining it and thinking about it um, uh, and looking at the other possibilities. and. Uh, the great adventure that we're having at the moment is uh, trading time. Uh, and it's uh, an interesting idea because it's pretty much ridiculed by everyone else, uh, <coughs> which always I think is helpful being a contrarian, um, that if you can find something the rest of the world doesn't necessarily know about, uh, that gives you a huge edge. So uh, today we're going to look mainly at time and the possibilities of it, um, and I'm going to show you how, uh, once you understand how to create time signals, uh, they have infinite flexibility uh, in their scope, and you can bend time to suit whatever it is uh, you're trying to do with your trading. Uh, so let's move on and get started. Uh, this, I'll just make sure that this screen has changed so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is a chart that most of you have seen many times. This is a weekly gold chart that uh, I've been showing you for a number of years um, and uh, uh, I've used this here I want to show you just the um, standard Daniel code time cycles uh, I'll get my highlighter uh, it's a bit hard to see with all the lines that are already on there here we are this is called the spotlight uh, so uh, in uh, these uh, series of highs we had uh, in early 2018 all of them fell uh, on a fifth seal line, very nice. 
uh, but the one we're interested in, this fifth seal high here, um, uh, the uh, before the, the market start to run down, uh, that came at a time cycle. And you can see this is the bar, this uh, blue bar here with nothing at the bottom. This is where this cycle starts from. And this is a 44 cycle runs exactly to that high. Those of you who are interested in time uh, would have read my articles. They're available at the Daniel Code website. Uh, the two you should read in particular are called Masterclass 1, uh, it's about time, and Masterclass 2, Trading Gold. Um, they're quite long articles. You should uh, print them out. Uh, but those of you who have read that material will know that 44 is the prime time cycle for gold, and it's effective uh, on every length of chart. It's the same on daily, weekly, monthly. It's the 6 and 12 days, the odd counts that we use for the Daniel Code cycles. Uh, 44 is a dominant cycle. Uh, you can see that that, same, that gave us the high, uh, and you can see that same cycle starts from the same place, uh, gave us this low, the 62 low, the recent low before this uh, market started consolidating. And it went down to its 1172 target and broke through it to land right on the uh, Daniel Code. Uh, that's actually a fifth, uh, that's, a f yeah, that's a variation of a fifth seal line. Uh, and that stopped it like a, like a train had hit it. Uh, but you can see clearly how these cycles run. You can get uh, 44 on one. You can expect to see another market turn uh, on the 59, the 62, or the 70. And I wanted to just refresh your memory on the basic, the very basic uh, parts of uh, Daniel Code time cycles. Uh, the dominant ones are 44, uh, 59, 62, and 70. Okay, and that's just your standard time cycle. See, that's on a weekly chart, uh, which we don't uh, use all the time. Um, here's the same thing um, on our six-day chart. This is one of our timing charts, uh, <coughs> our forecasting charts. We use the six-day uh, six chart and the 12-day chart predominantly. Um, and here I'm showing you something different. You can see that uh, the blue line uh, that starts all this off, uh, which is this uh, little blue line here, uh, the cursor was on. Uh, <coughs> that's not actually on a high. <coughs> it's actually on um, a bar before uh, the momentum or the impulse high of that rally. Uh, but what I've done to show you there is that if you adjust this time uh, machine, which is, uh, gives you the basic Daniel Code time cycles, to put the 44 on the high, um, it, it, that's uh, the April high, you put the 44 on that, look where the next one comes. The 59 comes exactly at the low. I've got arrows pointing to uh, the 44 and the 59 cycle. So even if you can't see where this thing starts from, um, and the reason is because time works in multiple phases. So if you're using a six-day bar chart, which is what this is, uh, each bar is six trading days. Um, you'll find that this actually started from a minor cycle, which you'd see on your daily chart, but it's not on the six-day chart. But what I've done here is uh, an unusual way of using these time cycles. Instead of the simple way of finding, or the normal way, I should say, of finding a high before the high or a low before the low to start the count, um, I've actually put the 44 on a known high. Um, and that's given us uh, the next uh, the next low uh, at 59. So that's to highlight for you the relationship between these um, market cycles. They're very dominant. Uh, they work on all markets in all time frames. Uh, and you can uh, spend a great deal of time uh, learning about them and trying to understand them. Uh, this is the uh, next chart. This is a momentum chart. It's a close-only chart. Uh, and uh, the interesting part of it, uh, is you can see that the momentum high uh, is actually different. The 2018 momentum high um, is not shown on a time cycle, but although it is the actual momentum high. Um, if we were going doing a full examination of this, you'd have a close-only chart and you'd run your time cycles off that as well. Um, and it's quite extraordinary what that will reveal for you. Okay, let's move on. And 
move to the next slide, which is the minor time cycles. I know this is going to start to get interesting, and for the first time, I'm going to actually show you some real short-term trading today. So now, I know a lot of you are interested in it, and um, uh, for those of you doing tutorials, um, I don't generally teach it uh, for the simple reason that uh, the most productive uh, purpose of trading, you know, understand when we talk about trading, I say to clients, um, the thing about trading is our job is not to be right. Uh, our job is to make money. Uh, that's the essential part of trading. And uh, in my experience, and uh, I've had a lot of it, the most money is actually made from trading daily bars. Um, and I should say that um, I'm probably a little bit biased on that because uh, for many years, probably eight or nine years, uh, while we were living in New Zealand, uh, which is, uh, you know, just to the east of Australia across the Tasman Sea or across the ditches, we say, um, I was trading uh, very short. I was doing short-term trading. Um, I've traded everything from, you know, uh, 240 minute, uh, 120, 60, 30, anything. Take your pick right down to trading three tick bars. Um, and I had uh, eight years of, and of course, it's the other part, other side of the world here, so you're, uh, U.S. trading session, which are the markets I trade, U.S. markets predominantly, um, are in the middle of the night um, in that part of the world. Um, and I had eight years of uh, sitting up all night uh, trading. And, you know, it, it's it's great. It was profitable, but eventually the strain uh, just gets to you. It's not, um, uh, you, you, it's not uh, possible to just stay up uh, all night and trade these things. I know a lot of people do. But once you get the idea and switch to your daily bars, um, a whole lot of that pressure comes off because once you understand how to create these time signals and also price signals, uh, you simply put on your order, uh, go away, uh, go and play golf, go to work, uh, uh, go sailing, do anything you want to do. You don't need to look at the market during the trading session because the orders created from any completed bar will tell you all the probabilities for the next day's trading. Um, so uh, here we are. This is now... What we've done is we've gone down to the minor Daniel Code time cycles. This is uh, fractals of 44, 59, 62, and 70. Um, and what you should see from this, the overwhelming picture to get from this, is you, you, you just hardly ever, hardly ever miss a signal. Um, the way I trade, I like to be in the market all the time. Uh, unless I can see a consolidation happening, I'm in that market. Um, I trade a number of different markets. If there's a consolidation coming in one, I'll switch to uh, one of the others. But uh, I want to be in the market all the time, as close as I can be, uh, other than our consolidations, of course, um, and trust in the volatility of the markets, particularly futures. That's what they're designed for, uh, to create profitable returns. Um, and uh, Peter, no, I'm not talking um, astro phenomena. Um, I've done that. Um, it's very interesting. I did that for years. Um, and those of you who are interested in that, uh, back in the uh, back in the day uh, when I was trading short term uh, signals, um, uh, uh, moon cycles were very important. Uh, new moons, full moons were, you know, uh, very important potential turning points. Uh, people, too many people started talking about that, so the market changed. Um, if you're interested in that sort of stuff now, uh, have a look at the uh, quarter moon uh, cycles. Um, have a look also at the maximum minimum points on apogees and perigees, um, and you'll uh, have some serious learning to do. Um, that, of course, the way to see the other part of what's happening with the moon on the daily uh, cycles are tides. Um, and uh, uh, tides are reflecting the gravitational pull of the moon. Uh, tides uh, come in, go out, they get higher, they get lower. Um, and uh, you get king tides when uh, um, the tidal flow coincides with a uh, apogee or perigee, a neaps. Uh, the, uh, the opposite of uh, king tides. Um, and um, at one stage, uh, Peter, I know that you've raised this question, um, I had some surveyors and I asked them to go and uh, give me an absolute measurement in uh, degrees, minutes, seconds uh, of the centre of the uh, 
uh, trading floor of the New York Stock Exchange, um, and they weren't allowed to do it, but they did the same thing on the front steps of the um, New York Stock Exchange. Um, and I then calculated the distance from uh, the New York uh, Battery, which is the closest tidal measurement system to the New York Stock Exchange. Don't forget when we're trading the S&P, we're actually trading the movements of stocks uh, making up that index that trade on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, and so I measured the distance from the New York Battery Tidal Station uh, to as close as I could get to the centre of the uh, New York uh, trading floor, uh, New York uh, Stocks trading floor. And um, <laughs> Peter had a better result. He did it off Google Earth. Um, and if you time that and then look at the uh, uh, tidal flows, uh, particularly the same thing, uh, look at the quarter tides and the Daniel Code ratios of tides uh, from high to low. You'll be amazed uh, at some of the things that happen. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, Peter, this has nothing to do with that. Um, all we've done so far is we've taken the fractals uh, of the major Daniel Code cycles. We've got down uh, to a much faster sequence that's a fractal or a part of those cycles. Um, and as you can see, the point to just note from this is that you get every turn, every high and low, almost without exception, um, is uh, you're going to catch it on your buy cycles and your sell cycles are the same, uh, and uh, you're going to know it uh, in advance. Uh, and it's uh, uh, quite extraordinary. That's the main part of that to, um, uh, to uh, bear in mind. So what we've done there, we've changed these time cycles uh, from our major cycles that we use in our six-day, 12-day charts to something that we can use on our daily charts, um, and it's sensational. Um, we can then look at other ways of creating similar time cycles. This is called the CTPS. CTP stands for Continuous Trading Protocol. That's the uh, basis of the uh, program I use. Um, and the S stands for Swing. This is a slower version. Um, and it's created, as I say here, this, it's creating time signals in another universe. This is a completely different method uh, of creating time signals. And what this has done uh, is it's taken the uh, calendar month um, and used the Daniel Code ratios uh, in regard to those. And uh, it's not uh, giving you every turn, uh, but it's giving you most of the major turns. In fact, right here, it's giving you all of the major turns on this piece of chart, uh, which runs from uh, March of this year on. Um, you can see it also misses out some signals. There's a gap uh, right here. Here we had uh, um, a cell. Uh, let me bring this up, this chart, so I can give you the dates. Bear with me while I look at the other uh, computer. and jump in enough data to have a look what we're talking about. You can see the sell signal uh, that comes on August the 22nd. That's this one here. It's the last sell signal on the page. That's the sell signal that's uh, one bar down, and it's immediately reversed. Now, if you're trading daily time signals from the CTP uh, matrix, uh, what you've done in your, uh, those of you who've done tutorials with me, um, then you are um, getting every one of these terms, including the uh, snapback reversal here. On the swing version of it, you don't get that because it's, it's, um, it's set up, uh, it's created, if you like, to create fewer entries. It's a, a, a form of swing trading uh, that keeps you with the major trend. Uh, but it does expose you to some unknown uh, situations where you don't get a new signal. It's not giving you the turn uh, at every signal, uh, the signal at every turn, I should say, uh, particularly the fast snapbacks, the failures, the uh, sell signals that don't stick and the buy signals that don't stick. Uh, and to overcome that, what you have to do is you have to use some trading technique. And you'll find with all of these systems, however you're uh, trying to develop a system or following what I do, um, you need to combine technique uh, with uh, your signals. This is uh, uh, one of those ones there that gave us a, uh, uh, a CTP swing buy um, and uh, then it uh, promptly failed. Um, and what I've uh, tried to show you here is that every market signal has a failure point. 
um, and this was a buy signal that was elected the next day. Uh, and so that became the setup bar, what we call the setup bar. Um, it had a high of uh, 1272.3 and a low of 1262.4. So two ticks below 1262.4, one tick if you like. I use two um, as a buffer because um, I hate getting filled uh, with a market that just goes one tick through a, um, uh, through a, a setup bar. Uh, but that market at the time, it takes out that fail point. You must always establish what would be the fail point of any signal. When that market goes through that three days later, you must be short. Okay? So my, uh, trade signals, when they're set up, uh, are actually doing two things. They're not only giving you uh, a high probability directional trade, uh, they're also giving you a new fail point. Um, and you should mark those because uh, that's the place where you know the chart is telling you you're wrong um, and you should be the other way. Uh, and you can get that very simply by following this technique. Identify your setup bar uh, and uh, if it's elected the fail point, uh, you must know that if market reaches the fail point, you must stop and reverse and go the other way. Uh, talking about uh, bending time, there's a lot of interest, uh, uh, even by our clients, in uh, swing trading, a slower, a much slower way of trading. Uh, we have a, a number of very good clients um, who trade our systems, which are basically daily trades, um, who are often saying, why can't we have, you know, more of a swing program? And, of course, you can because the fact that we can bend time, uh, which, you know, sounds preposterous, but it's not. Just think about uh, any basic uh, manipulation of time. You've got a, uh, a clock that has 360 degrees on it, which is six hours, 660 to 36. Um, and any, any one of the fractals of that is a valid time period. So if you're talking about a 60-minute chart, a 10-minute chart, a 5-minute chart, everyone's quite used to that. And all that's doing is it's taking the base 60 uh, or the higher base 360 and dividing it into sections. Um, and that's what we're doing here. We've set the time study. Um, instead of it working off uh, daily bars, it's now working off 29 days. Why 29 days? Those of you who've done tutorials, uh, we'll know that that's the first number in the Daniel Code sequence. Uh, 29 is, in fact, time. Um, and it's interesting that we get that matrix because uh, if you want to have a look up in Wikipedia, you'll see that 29.6 is also a synodial month. That's the average length of a month. Um, and, you know, we didn't really know all this stuff until, uh, to any high degree of accuracy, until... Uh, 1954 when the first atomic clock was unveiled in Paris uh, but uh, I use the 29 cycle a lot because that's the first of the Daniel Code sequences in fact if you use any of the Daniel Code sequences you'll get substantially the same thing uh, and if you eyeball this chart you, without being unduly critical you'll say every major every important buy and sell every important high and low is identified in advance by the time cycle. Now, uh, it's amazing to me that not more people haven't got onto this because uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing because <clears throat> the less the world knows about it, uh, the more effectively it works for us. Um, there is some degree of truism uh, in the fact that when things become public knowledge uh, and they are adopted by uh, some sort of a substantial portion of the uh, participating population, they become less effective. <clears throat> this uh, is quite uh, great for us because uh, most people um, scoff at the idea of trading time. In fact, uh, I have uh, went to a tutorial in the stage that I was going through trying to learn about trading. I went to seminars and presentations by all of the big names all over the world um, and found the same thing without being critical of anyone in particular, uh, that what works very, very well in the example uh, doesn't work so well in real life, which is why I had to dedicate myself to finding the Daniel Code. Um, nonetheless, uh, this particular gentleman, one of the biggest names in the business, uh, told an anecdote at uh, one of these uh, seminars I was at in uh, California. Um, and 
he was uh, ridiculing the idea of trading time. Uh, and his comment was, if you go to your bank manager and tell them you've, you, you've had great success with your trading and you've made two hours of time, <coughs> um, he won't give you any money. But if you go and tell him uh, you've had great success and you've made uh, 200 points or 2,000 points, um, he'll be happy to lend you some money. That was, uh, uh, that was the advice that I had then. And that actually slowed me down. Um, on the on the search for time for for many many years because you tend to believe these gurus they really most of them are just publicity machines um, and uh, it doesn't necessarily follow that they actually know a whole lot about uh, successful and profitable trading uh, but uh, not uh, not to denigrate people who uh, uh, some of them work very hard and um, uh, are very clever men so uh, that put me off the hunt for time which is uh, perhaps why I'm so keen on it now I'm catching up. Um, on years where I suspected that time was a prime factor in markets um, and uh, I didn't actually uh, find out what makes these uh, cycles. So just uh, look at this chart and say, well, every major turn um, has got a cycle on it. It's either got a, a sell cycle, a sell signal uh, or a buy cycle, every major turn. Um, and that should show you how you can change the uh, time uh, to morph into uh, a projection of future market turns. Um, the basic way most people look at times is they'll put on a static cycle uh, or a linear cycle. This happens to be the 29-day cycle. This is the blue lines with the dots and dashes in them. Um, and I put that on the uh, September high just uh, to show you somewhere to start. And, you know, as you go on repeating your 29-day cycles, um, it really doesn't tell you anything at all. Um, it's uh, entirely random, um, and that's because uh, this is a good way of showing you what doesn't work in market cycles. They're not linear. Uh, they're occasionally repetitive. Uh, the most famous ones, the uh, the uh, low of the uh, the 2009 March 2009 low after the market crash from 2007. Uh, that uh, market high in the S and P came on a 59-day cycle on the six-day chart, and then it repeated from the high to the low uh, with 59 uh, lots of six days or 59 bars on the six-day chart exactly and precisely. So uh, they will repeat once quite often, uh, and uh, one of the easiest ways to look at time is to find a cycle that has worked and look for it to repeat. But bear in mind that uh, repeats such as we had at that 2009 low are very, very rare. Uh, <coughs> normally there are uh, a number of different time cycles running at the same time. And what markets are doing, <coughs> this uh, apparent random look that they have, is because they're switching from one time cycle to another and then back to the other. But uh, repetitive linear time cycles don't really exist, so uh, you can save your time on that score. Um, Looking at these ideas of swing trading, this is a section I've taken um, out of uh, the gold market. All of this stuff, I've used the gold, uh, Comex gold chart, the 057 uh, from Trade Navigator is the continuous chart, one of them. Um, and you can see you had a buy um, on the uh, uh, October low. Uh, you got a nice uh, rally out of it, one, two, three, four, five, six bars up. And then you had this horrendous pullback. The thing to learn from this is the low of the setup bar was 1262.8. The market pulled back all the way um, to, I've got the wrong number in there. Uh, it's not 1253.8. Um, it's 1261.8. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Let me see if I can bring that up on a chart because that's uh, uh, not uh, the correct uh, situation there. Um, And that was November 17. Uh, and here it is. Uh, the first the first of those bars <coughs> that has the time buy signal on it, that has the low uh, of 12.62.8, that was October the 6th, uh, 2017. Uh, and the pullback for the rally uh, finished up that low. Uh, came on October the 27th at 12.63.8. In other words, one point, 10 ticks higher than the low of the setup bar. 
And it's those sorts of things that, I mean, they just don't happen by accident. If you have your stop in the right place, it shouldn't get hit. Uh, but uh, you then have to ask yourself, well, if that's a sort of form of trading, of swing trading, why would anyone want to put themselves through um, um, sitting through that pullback? I mean, it's absolutely horrendous. Um, and uh, yikes uh, isn't just an understatement. So uh, 1263.8, uh, that should have been, not 1253.8. Uh, do forgive me. Uh, this... Uh, uh, there's, there's your pullback, you know, it's 99 point something or other. Uh, what's, uh, why would you sit through that? That's, you know, the sort of problems I see in swing trading. Uh, <clears throat> I don't do swing trading now myself, but uh, we have programs uh, that run swing trading. Um, and uh, that to me is all, um, you know, emotionally. Uh, I can't uh, sit and watch a 90% pullback because uh, my brain screams at me that uh, it's inefficient. You should be short. Um, and, but uh, that's one of the natures of uh, swing trading. A lot of people seem to uh, find it quite acceptable. Uh, I, could, I couldn't uh, sit through it. And if you look at this next chart, uh, which has just changed for you, you can see that you don't need to sit through it because the half cycle, whatever cycle you're using, uh, don't forget the most important words of uh, the Daniel Code Matrix and and half. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I mean, uh, uh, you'll find it actually in the um, video. There's a video, audio video underneath articles of the Daniel Code website called Live at the Springs. Uh, and, and and half um, is uh, a, a very important instruction that we get. Uh, from the uh, source of the Daniel Code. Um, and uh, if and and half is important, and since they're using the main cycles, uh, we should also be concerned with half cycles. Um, and you can see this whole pullback here is totally avoidable uh, because you had a half cycle sell signal uh, right at the top, which also happened to be on a 59 time cycle. Um, and that gave us the turn at the top of that rally. Down it came. Uh, and you finished up with the half cycle buy exactly to the day and only to the day um, on that low that came on uh, October the 27th. So once you've decided what the cycle is that you want to use, always remember the half cycle will be important for the counter trends. Okay, and it doesn't matter what, what time cycle you're interested in, always be aware that there's a, be aware there's a failure point for each signal. Uh, and be aware that the half cycle uh, will always give you the uh, counter trend. Uh, John, uh, Gant, for this chart, the entry points are beginning or end of the bars or some other parameter. All our entry points are on stop um, at, uh, at true highs and true lows on the daily market, John. So if you're buying, it's the true high. Make sure you're aware what the true high is as opposed to the chart high. Uh, true high plus two ticks. The sell is the uh, chart low minus two ticks, the bar low minus two ticks. Um, and that's the same no matter what time cycle you're trading, whether you're trading uh, daily charts, weekly charts, or in fact, uh, the shorter term charts, which I'm going to show you as we go further along. Um, one of the uh, most hated features of markets are outside bars. Uh, we occasionally get those days where, you know, six, seven, eight outside bars all hit the currency market um, at once. And um, you can hear the screaming from a long way away. Um, but uh, inside bars and outside bars actually have another purpose. They're, they're flag posts, they're sign posts, they're markers, if you like, uh, for future price. And uh, what I've shown you here is this... Uh, uh, big outside bar um, in uh, early July, late June 2017. Uh, and uh, when you just see it the first time, you, you ascribe no reason to it at all. You say, why the hell did that happen? Um, and it's uh, usually a news item or something. Uh, but actually, the high and low of that outside bar are in, in vital parameters <coughs> in setting up the four seal lines that gave us the counter trend high um, four months later. Um, in uh, uh, the end of October. Uh, and you can see the two lines there. Talking about news items, crikey. <laughs> the drama in the States today with this um, um, Kavanaugh's um, confirmation. Um, 
uh, I, I don't know quite how to put this in perspective, but um, Australians and uh, uh, Kiwis, they're the people who live in New Zealand, I've lived a long time in both places, um, have a view of politics that's totally alien uh, to uh, uh, what happens in the States. And Australians think of their politicians as just a, you know, an unpleasant necessity. I don't think one in a thousand, or we, we even one in ten thousand Australians, let's go further, one in a hundred thousand, uh, couldn't tell you the name of their local member or uh, what their ideas were. Uh, but this, uh, this, this personal conflict that's going on with Kavanaugh and the, the, the Democrats, uh, to us is just so extraordinary. It's like, God, why would anyone care? Uh, but uh, look, uh, they do care very deeply, and um, um, it's reached... Uh, Boy, it's reached an extraordinary state, hasn't it? I can remember some years ago, uh, Bill O'Reilly was on the Fox Network, which uh, we get here because, of course, uh, uh, Murdoch owns um, uh, Sky Television in Australia. Uh, so we get Fox Channel. We also get CNN. Uh, but uh, I always used to find O'Reilly very um, amusing and, uh, and quite bright. Um, and I remember when he wrote a book, um, I don't know, it's five or six years ago now, uh, he started writing books and he wrote a book called The Culture Wars and it was talking about um, this sort of ongoing war between the cultures of uh, the conservatives and the and the liberals. And um, I never got uh, much past about the first chapter of it. I, I just didn't think there was anything in it. But boy, you look at it now, I mean... <laughs> American media is just obsessed with these culture wars and they'll, it seems to me, they'll say and do anything. They just don't seem to be uh, um, any limits at all. Paul said they only care about winning. Damn the truth, angry people vote. Yes, uh, but I mean, it's just reached the absurd stage, hasn't it? Um, honestly. Anyway, good luck. Uh, whoever's uh, getting the buzz out of it, good luck. Um, I guess it is important the balance of the Supreme Court because that's uh, ultimately where your constitution's interpreted. Uh, I can also tell you that uh, um, I don't know one person in the world who could name the Australian High Court judges, uh, which is the equivalent of your Supreme Court. We just couldn't care less about it all. Okay, uh, have a look at this chart. This is interesting for all of you who are thinking about uh, your trading. Um, it's a basic parameter of trading that markets, in a trending market, markets will only correct three bars. In a trending market, markets will only correct one or two or three bars, no more. Now, that's the rule. Like all rules, it gets broken occasionally. You'll sometimes see a, a correction of four bars before the trend um, assumes. Uh, but the three-bar rule is a very basic uh, tool of uh, swing trading that uh, once you've got your entry you'd use um, a three bar stop um, and look what happens here after we got this low this is the one I've been showing you uh, all along look at this fail 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 all of those bars uh, have violated the three bar stop so a, a three bar stop uh, in this case, the trend has actually changed to up such that it is. It's pretty feeble. Um, but you've got uh, uh, the uh, low of the last three completed daily bars is, the, is called the three-bar stop. Uh, so uh, this bar right here is violated, one, two, three. Lows, this bar here, the low is violated, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and this bar here has violated one, two, three lows. When you see a three bar stop being violated, it means that the trend is so weak that it doesn't technically qualify as a trend. Uh, if this were a true trend, we've had the change of trend to up. Um, if this were a true trend, you wouldn't see a three bar stop being violated. Uh, or if you did, it would be one of those rare ones that went to four. Uh, but that shouldn't violate the three-bar stop. Three-bar stops are very, very strong uh, stake in the ground about a trending market. Um, and if you're seeing violations of a three-bar stop, that's your first sign that this market's in consolidation. And when a market's in consolidation, what it means from a technical point of view is there is no trend. Uh, now, I know that sounds like a contradiction in terms, but it's actually only a, <coughs> a contradiction in degrees. <coughs> we know here that 
uh, at the 70 day cycle or the day before it, which you can see on this chart, the trend in this market turned in, to changed to up in terms of the daily bars. Uh, but it was so weak that it gave you these three violations of the three bar rule, which tells you that at no stage could we define that as a trending market. Um, and if it's not a trending market, it's a consolidation. And if it's a consolidation, we don't want to be in it. Uh, for those of you who've done tutorials, I've taught you that if you suspect there's a consolidation on, go to safety mode. Um, and uh, if uh, you feel more strongly about it, trade another market. Uh, the main thing about trading is don't uh, get stuck with just one market. Uh, if you're only trading one market, you're going to start obsessing over every win and every loss. Trade two or three markets if you can, uh, and uh, you can find markets with smaller uh, margins if you're uh, trading a smaller account. Okay, this is the Daniel C. Daniel Code CTP, Continuous Trade Protocol Machine Trading. I've been talking to you about this for years, literally. Uh, this is our uh, computer-based auto trade program. Um, and this is the output that runs the 1st of January to the 17th September uh, this year. This is a summary of part of the output uh, of that program. And you can see here uh, that it's made uh, 22,500 in net profits uh, so far this year. Um, and that uh, is after accounting for transaction fees, uh, com and what have you. There's no slippage uh, in any of these accounts with machine trading. Uh, the machine um, assumes that it's getting filled at the number it wants to be filled at, uh, which is not a real not a realistic um, view of uh, markets. Uh, but um, there it is, and you can see here uh, that <coughs> the return percentage percent M. That's the percent return on margin. Um, I know brokers always uh, ask you to have twice margin in your account, <coughs> but I argue that the real uh, cost, the real uh, cost of any trade is the margin because the minute your trade is filled uh, that margin comes out of your account um, and um, we'd never of course have stops that uh, would even threaten anything like a, a margin call uh, our stops are way way smaller than that uh, but the reality is once that uh, those funds are committed um, uh, you can't use them so the opportunity cost <laughs> is the margin um, and this program here is running at 594 <coughs> percent on margin uh, for the um, nine months to date so it, 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 it's it's pretty exciting uh, this is not finished yet you can see from the drawdown the maximum drawdown the end of day drawdown that 5515 some of the stops are not in the right place that's what if you have a big drawdown that tells you your stop loss part of your program uh, is not uh, working in practice the way you've designed it so we have work to do on that um, and if you look at the uh, last uh, uh, comment on the right hand column it says percentage in market uh, 0.755 that's 75 and a half percent and it should be 95 and a half percent so uh, we've still got a few bugs in the system but I want to show you this because <coughs> we're getting very very close to um, uh, being able to release this program uh, initially at least on a trial basis for you to have a look at um, and uh, by that I mean I think we're only um, a matter of um, a week or maybe um, a fortnight um, a fortnight's two weeks folks uh, I know you don't always use, all use that expression uh, but we're a week or two away from um, uh, having a product you'll be able to see and trial uh, and so far this part of it looking uh, pretty good and I'll keep you informed about that at least we have some uh, we have a real program now that's uh, creating the charts creating its orders placing the stops doing its risk management all the things it's supposed to do uh, we now just have to go through and uh, make sure we've plugged any areas where uh, this program's having a dead trouble identifying uh, where it stops should be that's vital of course um, and uh, here we are let's get right down to the short-term trading if we can truly bend time uh, we ought to be able to do short-term charts and this is a 60-minute chart uh, if you look at this <coughs> the overwhelming impression you get is that your time cycle 60-minute time cycles are finding sells and buys for every important turn on the chart the ones that are going to beat you and need some technique 
are the outside bars. Those of you who've been with me a while know that for an outside bar on the day of a new entry, you must, must, must stop and reverse uh, with the outside bar. Um, and you, you, that, that is the part of it that is technique, uh, and it's not just a question of uh, the signals. If you just simply follow the time signals with a prudent <coughs> risk management, a prudent stop loss, uh, <coughs> you're going to make an awful lot of money because the point here is this overwhelming ability of time signals <coughs> properly structured to find every single turn uh, in the market. Uh, but you do need some technique. If we look at this buy signal here, uh, the, the sell signal doesn't come until uh, this big outside bar. But you've already been stopped out. This has taken out your three bar stop or your four bar, any sort of stop you had. Um, and that's where technique comes into it. But getting down the line with your trading, <coughs> for those of you who are interested in short term trading, this is, uh, and I say it's heroic because uh, <laughs> I say that for heroes because I've done, been there, done that, um, and uh, <clears throat> I just, uh, I was worn out by it, to be honest with you, after eight years, um, and uh, I uh, even traded tick charts, three ticks, five ticks, just wild stuff, um, but it all works exactly the same way if you've got your time sequence right. This is a 15-minute chart, um, and... Um, same thing, look at the sells and the buys. The overwhelming impression you get is that these time signals are picking up every significant turn. You're also seeing that you've got a couple of failures here, that you've got <coughs> um, uh, a buy signal um, that didn't stick. It got elected one day up. That's a one-day counter trend. Uh, if the trend is down, <coughs> which it is, uh, this is the... Uh, uh, 5 a.m. Is this 5 a.m.? 5, 6, 6, quarter to 7, maybe 6.30 uh, a.m. Uh, today uh, in gold. Uh, little buy signal there that didn't stick. In other words, it had one bar up. The trend was down, so that makes it a one bar counter trend. And <clears throat> you have to be aware of the failure point. The fail point is below the setup bar, two ticks below the setup bar. When the market trades there, which it does, one bar after the trade's elected, you've got to be short. Uh, and once you've done that, you get the big run down, right down uh, to the 9 o'clock low, where you get a time buy, up it goes to 10 o'clock, you get the time sell, down to the 11 o'clock, you get a time buy, and then it gets a bit wobbly. You get three sell signals along there. Uh, you only get one buy signal, um, and the first of the sell signals fails. And it's got a cross underneath it with the word fail. Same thing. It's not unknown for these signals to fail. But with your technique combined with your time signals, you will be on the right side of the market almost all the time. And if you're on the right side of the market, the volatility of the futures market, traded across a range of markets, uh, will always um, have you in profit. Uh, so well, there you are. I think I hope I'm showing you how <coughs> time can be bent. Um, and to um, any time you actually like. Um, and while trading this time, it's the new big thing, it is for me, uh, because it's uh, something that took me 20 years to work out. Um, and uh, personally, no one is more thrilled uh, by the time signals than I am. <clears throat> and no one is more amazed by them than I am. So uh, there is a tendency... Um, as I've demonstrated to you, uh, to just talk about time, and that's uh, not what we should be doing. Don't forget, while we're talking about time, price signals are continuing to go on, and I wanted to just refresh your memories after talking about time uh, for 45 minutes about how accurate these price signals are. Uh, this is the um, Aussie US dollar pair, um, and you can see a Wednesday's high, 7316 and the Daniel Code Blue Line. Now these charts um, are all in the uh, members charts. They come out uh, twice a week. Uh, let me find that. I think you're going to find the variance uh, between actual and technical and theoretical. Here it is. Uh, that bar's Wednesday, September the 26th. There was a Daniel Code Blue Line on the members charts at 7316, uh, which has been there for um, a week and a half, perhaps. That high 
7315. One tick out of 7,000 variants between actual and theoretical. Amazing. And of course, that set us up for the nice cell which we got today. Let's look at the next one I want to show you. Uh, this is Euro Yen. Uh, I know a lot of you trade that. Same thing. There's the, there's the high. 133.088, that was the blue line. You can see this market battling to get through that blue line. It tests it once, it gaps down and pulls back. It tests it the second time, it tests it the third time, right on it, fourth time it goes a couple of ticks through it. <coughs> That's it, it's all over, down it goes. Now, where does it go to? Exactly to the um, first retracement, uh, 131.564. Uh, in the Daniel Code uh, retracement tools. Let's look at copper. Same thing. Here's copper. Had a nice, had a big run up. Uh, found the black line. 285.8. Let me bring that up and tell you what it was exactly. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time. Um, I don't want to uh, pretend that it does, but that uh, high uh, came on uh, September the 21st and that closed. It's 285.75, one, one tick away from the blue line. Uh, remember that these uh, Daniel Code um, targets uh, are valid on the bar high or the close. Uh, and this, was, this one came at the close, one tick from the blue line. What follows was a little bit of a sell-off. Look where it's gone to. It's just tracking uh, the Daniel Code retracement numbers down the page. Uh, it's like honestly it's like these markets are trained and they are they're trained by the Daniel code uh, because the Daniel code is the DNA of markets it comes entirely from price action um, and that's uh, why these things are so good this is UST bond uh, this is this uh, one and a half days rally we've had out of here uh, and this is pretty sloppy uh, but you can see the market working here at 139.27 was the Daniel code blue line Go back a few days, it breaks it, it rallies back, it puts in the inside bar, it breaks it, it rallies back, it has a little higher bar, it goes down to test that blue line again, it breaks through the blue line and then bang, it closes one or two ticks above the blue line. The blue line is like a magnet, it's just <coughs> sucking this market in all the time. Um, and from there, of course, we got the reverse signal, we got <coughs> excuse me, one day up and another half a day up. So don't, uh, uh, don't um, lose sight of the fact that while I'm uh, talking to you constantly uh, about time in today's tutorial, time is only one way of trading. We also uh, have extraordinary uh, trading results from trading price because the Daniel Code numbers give us an edge that nobody else has got. The markets will turn at and only at the Daniel Code numbers. Um, and if you want to examine that proposition, uh, you can go to the Daniel Code website, www.thedanielcode.com, um, and you'll find there's about 36,000 uh, of the charts. I do them all by hand twice a week, and you can see about 36, 37,000 of the charts I've created uh, since 2008. Um, yeah, how about that? In December, guys, we'll have been going for 10 years. Um, Wish I could find you all. We should be having a party of some sort. Um, ten years is uh, yeah, it's a long time. Be doing one business, um, and uh, and it's been great. And I, I loved uh, having all of you with me. Your enthusiasm uh, is what uh, really makes it all worthwhile. Uh, so if you really uh, want more information on this stuff, or you want to be a super trader, uh, email me, Jane Needham at the Daniel Code dot com. Uh, with your phone number and your country and your location so I'm not going to wake you up in the middle of the night and I'll uh, be happy to give you a call on the phone and discuss your trading uh, and how I can uh, take you from whatever level you're at um, uh, including uh, maybe like Glenn it's never seen a chart uh, uh, or you might be a pretty experienced trader a lot of you have come to me are uh, and uh, if you're good we can make you better um, if you know nothing that's the best way to be because we don't have to get you out of bad habits um, and uh, you'll just need the determination and dedication uh, the rest I will uh, supply okay let's see what we've got here with a few comments today um, Philip uh, 29 day chart not linear can you explain 
that a bit more. <coughs> How do we replicate on a chart? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> is it? It is. If it is not just a straight twenty-nine bear period from one bar to the next bar, um, and it certainly isn't. Just let me uh, show you the rest of what's on this um, um, PowerPoint, uh, Philip, so I can come back to you. Um, uh, for any of you folks, if you haven't um, had a free trial. Uh, of the Daniel Code, you're most welcome to just uh, uh, go to the uh, website www.thedanielcode.com. Uh, there's a link there for uh, free trials. Click on that link, uh, follow the prompts, um, and uh, uh, Terry, um, who runs support at thedanielcode.com um, in Canada, uh, will be uh, happy to switch you on and uh, give you a 31 day free trial of everything. Uh, that's at the Daniel Code. Um, in the same way, uh, we're a partner of Genesis Trade Navigator, um, and if you haven't already had a trial of their uh, software, which I use all the time, uh, we can arrange a free trial of Trade Navigator for you also. Uh, and this is uh, our compliance uh, statement, folks. Uh, trading is risky. Um, risk can be substantial, uh, and uh, uh, if you haven't uh, learned to trade from the Daniel Code, you've You've got a real big risk every time you trade, so I want you to be aware of that. Um, uh, you may think from these charts that I'm showing you a way to make trading easy. Nothing's easy um, in trading. Everything is about risk management um, and um, uh, maintaining your capital. The preservation of capital is always paramount. Uh, but uh, if you do an annual code tutorial, you'll be much better placed uh, to uh, take on the uh, rigors and the joys of trading. Okay, so we should be able to uh, get out of that uh, now. And uh, uh, I wanted to just see that chart, that uh, that screen that Philip's talking about. Uh, and I think it was a 29-day chart. And here it is. Uh, this is, I can show you this bone up. Uh, here we are. There we are. Uh, this is the 29 cycle that Philip Olsen is talking about. Uh, how do we replicate on our chart? It's not a straight 29 period. Uh, no, I've shown you that. Um, Philip, and this is, don't waste your time on that. This is the one that's got the linear 29 cycle on it. Um, and it doesn't work. It may work occasionally. As I said, the most famous uh, repeat of a linear cycle was uh, 59 <coughs> on the six-day chart, that's six days to each bar, into the 2007 high, and then exactly the same period of time into the 2009 crash low in the S&P. Uh, so, yes, occasionally these uh, will, will repeat in what appears to be a linear method, but it doesn't go on because there's a multiplicity of time cycles working uh, within these charts, and they switch from one to the other. Uh, how could you uh, replicate the chart? You'd need to know how to create uh, time cycles, uh, Philip, and... Um, uh, unless you've done a Daniel Code tutorial, uh, you probably don't. Uh, once you know how to create time cycles, uh, <coughs> they're just like a clock. They're infinitely variable. You can set them for uh, work on daily charts, um, six-day charts, uh, 29. This is the number. This is the first Daniel Code number, uh, uh, 37, 44, 59, any of the Daniel Code numbers, um, and they'll just give you a bigger and bigger uh, uh, time space between uh, the signals being created. Um, uh, Akshay, hi. Um, yeah, Peter, linear cycles fit where they hit, that's right. Uh, and it's usually in nowhere useful. Um, share an update for crude and T bonds. Um, uh, Akshay, I can't because they're on a different, um, they're on a different uh, computer. Uh, if there's anything uh, particularly about markets you'd like me to talk about, uh, actually, is interested in uh, crude and T-bonds. Uh, for any of you, if any of you have particular markets that you're interested in, um, if you'd kindly drop me an email, jneedham at thedanielcode.com. Uh, a few days before the uh, webinar is due, uh, which is either every two weeks or every three weeks, um, then I will be happy to do a special presentation for you. Um, I know there are lots of other people interested in 
uh, crude oil and T bonds. Uh, really interesting the response on on T bonds, wasn't it? To uh, uh, what uh, uh, what the Fed did that um, you know they were uh, uh, clearly tightening um, and um, the T bond chart goes up, which of course uh, uh, the way the T bond chart's constructed, it's the opposite of what's happening. So uh, the price going up on a T-bond chart means interest rates going down. Um, and in fact, you've got the opposite of the Fed meeting, uh, very uh, firmly putting in place the dots, the projections for their future hiking. Um, and the logical thing would have been uh, to be expecting um, uh, a rise in interest rates. Uh, and that would mean that you'd expect on the bond charts that the bar would go down. Uh, but of course, markets don't work on our sort of logic. There is complete and utter logic um, in markets. Um, and um, I even showed you the uh, uh, the end of this somewhere or other. I um, I showed you what happened with T-bond. Um, and here it is. And here's why. Here's your T-bond chart. Look at this, Akshay. I went through this 139.27 uh, was the uh, Daniel Code blue line. You can see this market uh, fighting at and around that for five days before it finally got its close right. Uh, 139.27 uh, was the blue line number. Uh, and uh, what I can tell you uh, is that low bar there on September the 25th, uh, Tuesday of this week, that closed 139.27. Karat 28. Okay, the karat's the number that comes after the little arrowhead. One tick out. That closed. 139.28. Marvellous, isn't it? And that's been on the chart <coughs> ever since the high, soon after the high. Um, so uh, that tells you all. Logically, you would expect this market would go down on this chart, which means interest rates going up. But as I've just explained, actually, markets do work on logic, but they work on Daniel Code logic. Uh, they work on support and resistance, the target recognition of these blue lines and the red lines. Um, so it's certainly, as you can see from this uh, response to the Fed's announcement on Wednesday, um, it's not linear logic either. So linear is having a bad trot with us for the moment. Okay. Uh, pleasure having you guys uh, and gals. Um, and um, let me have a quick look about the uh, people who might have come in uh, a little bit late, and I didn't give them my regards. John from Coffs Harbour, there's Akshay Albert. Uh, oh, Bernard, Bernard, lovely to have you with us, my friend. Uh, so long. There's a voice from the past. Uh, a great, uh, great Daniel Code guy. He, he trades G Match. Um, and very, very good at it. Uh, Brian up in Wee War, he's an agronomist up there. Good to have you with us, Webby. The uh, King of the uh, uh, Daniel Code Black Lines. Uh, terrific to have you with us. Uh, Hank down there in uh, Singleton. Uh, good to have you guys. I'm sorry I didn't catch you right at the beginning. Um, and uh, it's good to have you uh, uh, with us here today. Uh, let's see who else. Hey, we're getting to the end of it. We? Oh, John over in Co John from Coffs Harbour is over in um, Cornwall. Uh, having a holiday with his family. Very nice. Uh, Justin uh, from uh, 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 down the uh, Hunters with us. Hope you guys are getting some rain down there. It's awfully dry. Uh, Mark, he's tutorial guy, doing very well. like to hear from you. Marvino, good stalwart, always with us. Uh, Peter Phillips, uh, yeah, Scott. Tom Tom turned up. Your boss turned up, or your partner, I should say, turned up a bit early. Good to have you with us. Tom, and also uh, Tom Risky, who's a builder um, in the uh, beautiful part of the world around Aspen and Vale. Uh, Tom, I hope the uh, I hope the uh, building industry's uh, in full bore. Uh, and Vicky, uh, lovely to have a lady with us. We don't have many of them, uh, and of course we do treasure them when they're with us. So very welcome, Vicky. Um, that's it, folks, for the time being. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a different. Uh, this has opened your eyes to some possibilities. Um, trading should not ever be static and fixed just to one idea. Uh, if you can prove uh, one concept as a base, uh, then uh, logically you should be able to find uh, ways to expand that base to work in other time frames uh, without uh, you know, uh, 
without defeating the original principle that you started with. And once you can do that, it opens up all sorts of probabilities. And trading is all about probabilities. Great having you with us, folks. Uh, don't forget, if you want any markets particularly analysed, as Akshay did, shoot me an email <coughs> a few days before um, the webinar, and I will be happy to prepare a report for you on um, any market that you're interested in. Okay, all the best, folks. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. It's uh, uh, Friday afternoon here, so uh, the week's nearly over for me. Um, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you at our next uh, webinar. Any questions, shoot me an email. Happy to talk to you anytime. Bye for now.